Welcome everybody. My name is Ever Barbero and today I'd like to talk about multifunctional composites. In the title of this video we have two words, multifunctional and composites. Let's define them. A composite is a combination of two or more materials that achieve performances exceeding those of the constituents. Performances are measured by properties, such as strength or durability, and so on. Thus, a composite could be stronger than the matrix material yet be more durable than the fibers themselves. A composite that is optimized for stiffness and strength, is said to be a structural material. But often such material needs other properties, or functionalities, as well. For example, a structural material used for the fuselage of modern aircraft, needs more than stiffness and strength, it needs to provide electromagnetic protection to the electronics housed inside the aircraft, and much more. Multifunctional simply means that more than one functionality is provided. Many devices, such smartphones, are multifunctional. But devices provide multiple functions by assembling a set of discrete components, each providing a separate functionality. In contrast, a multifunctional material provides multiple functionalities without requiring any assembly. Today's video is an overview of the content available in this textbook, which is available from Amazon. It includes 12 chapters, each identifying the application, or major functionality that the chapter addresses. In this video, I will spend some time to briefly explain what each chapter is about. In all chapters, it is assumed that the main functionality, is structural. That is, the ability of the material to sustain loads, which is described by its stiffness and strength. However strong a composite material may be, it may fail to perform its function, if the material does not adequately provide added functionalities that, besides strength, are crucial for the performance of the application. A cursory look at chapter titles gives an idea of what functionalities we are trying to achieve. Electromagnetic shielding. Lighting strike protection. Toughening for impact damage. Erosion resistance. Acoustic damping. Vibration damping. Self-healing. Microvascular transport. Reduction of permeability. Fire resistance. Thermal protection, and Magnetoelectric Composites Our initial interest on multifunctional materials, was to seek ways to restore functionalities that classical materials have, but are lost when classical materials, such as aluminum, are replaced by composites. Later we learned that it was possible to integrate, into the composite structure, some of the functionalities currently provided by devices, such as antennas. And finally we realized that some composites can provide novel functionalities that are not commonly available on any classical material. Ideally, multifunctionality should be built into the material itself, without requiring coatings or other components to be added in order to achieve the desired functionalities. But this is not always possible. In such case, multifunctionality can be achieved by a multifunctional structure, or device. And finally, when the functionality is not available in nature, we say that what we have, is a metamaterial. We shall comment on these aspects throughout this video, leading to a classification, by the end of the video. Perhaps the simplest example of multifunctional material is illustrated by electromagnetic shielding, which is naturally provided by aluminum without doing anything to it. On older aircraft, Aluminum was chosen for its stiffness, strength, and lightweight, but, since aluminum is electrically conductive, an aluminum fuselage is a Faraday cage, thus protecting the electronics inside the aircraft from external electromagnetic radiation. That advantage is largely lost on modern composite aircrafts that use mostly carbon epoxy composites. Even though carbon fibers are electrically conductive, once embedded into an epoxy matrix, the resistivity of the composite can be many times that of aluminum. That means that the tail-to-nose voltage generated under typical electromagnetic events, such as lighting, 
could be too much for the electronics inside the aircraft. That requires adding a wired ground path throughout the aircraft and a copper mesh on the surface. These are heavy add-ons, that tend to negate the weight savings achieved with composites versus aluminum. Thus, development of an electrically conductive composite would be a great advance for future aircraft. Once again, here we find a functionality that is required for composites but it wasn't for metals. Low velocity impact of laminated composites often leads to delaminations in the composite. Delaminations are detrimental to the load carrying capacity of the composite, especially if the laminate is loaded in compression. Toughening for impact damage is a process by which delaminations are either delayed or healed. Eight methods are listed in this view graph. The first seven, are methods to delay the onset and or propagation of delaminations. Only the last method listed, deals with healing the delamination. There is a separate chapter dedicated to self-healing, as it applies to other types of damage besides delaminations. Although toughening for impact damage is the most studied of all the functionalities considered in this presentation, it is still a very active area of R&D. Here we can see the tip of a windmill blade with noticeable damage due to erosion. Erosion is caused by high-velocity impact of particles like sand, hail, or water droplets. Metals have high erosion resistance, but they have been replaced by polymer-based composites that are lightweight and much more fatigue-resistant. Erosion affects windmill blades, helicopter rotor blades, aircraft, and any composite structure subject to aerodynamic loads, where particles or water droplets may exist. Longer blades, with higher tip velocity, are more energy efficient. But higher tip velocity exacerbates the erosion problem. Unfortunately, the only practical solution so far, is to coat the composite with polyurethane, which provides good erosion protection, but brings out other problems. A large body of knowledge exists regarding the erosion problem, including theoretical and experimental methods. And great interest exists on developing composite materials that are erosion resistant, without requiring the use of coatings. For all the problems described so far, classical materials, such as aluminum, were able to provide the functionality required, be it electromagnetic shielding, lightning strike protection, or erosion resistance. The next problem is attenuation of noise, for which both, composites and metals, are unable by themselves to provide adequate attenuation. For jet engines specifically, the most accepted solution is to surround the engine with a layer of perforated material, whereby each perforation is a Helmholtz resonator, designed to trap some of the noise. The problem is exacerbated by stringent regulations regarding acceptable noise during aircraft takeoff and landing. Furthermore, energy efficiency considerations have pushed for the development of larger diameter turbofan jet engines. The large diameter creates a problem for aircraft manufacturers that have to fit larger and larger engines under the wing of commercial aircraft. Under these conditions, the layer of perforated material is occupying valuable space between the actual jet engine and the composite enclosure. Such space could be better used to build a more energy-efficient jet engine. Thus, great interest exists on developing composite materials that are themselves capable of noise attenuation. The idea behind vibration damping, is to add a viscoelastic material, to incorporate a dissipation mechanism into a structure made of either metal or composite, because neither metals nor composites have sufficient damping themselves. The added viscoelastic layer is called, viscoelastic treatment. Most composite structures are built in the form of relatively thin beams, plates, or shells. On these structures, membrane deformations are necessarily small, to avoid exceeding the strength of the material. Unwanted vibrations, often propagate in the form of bending waves. It is these waves that can be effectively attenuated by damping treatments. Passive damping treatments can be applied in the form of unconstrained damping, and constrained damping. An unconstrained damping treatment is simply a layer of viscoelastic material bonded to one or both faces of the structural shell. 
Oncostrained damping is weakly effective because vibration bending of the shell produces small membrane deformations on the bonded treatment, and thus there is not much energy to be dissipated. However, oncostrained damping is often used because of low cost and simplicity of application. Examples can be found on the inside surface of the door panels in automobiles, household appliances, and so on. Constrained damping adds a layer of stiff material on top of the unconstrained damping treatment. Such configuration forces shear deformation of the viscoelastic material, which dissipates much more energy than the unconstrained case. However, constrained damping adds complexity to the system and thus it tends to be used for more weight critical applications such as aircraft. Embedding of the viscoelastic material in a laminated composite is a special case of constrained damping. However, note that placing the viscoelastic layer at the mid-surface of the laminate would have almost no damping effect, because the shear deformation is negligible at the mid-surface of a shell during bending. To maximize the damping effect, one can place the viscoelastic material far away from the mid-surface, using clips, as shown on this view graph. However, this further complicates the installation. Once again, Great interest exists for developing composite materials with self-damping. Self-healing is a biomimetic functionality. Biomimetic means that the material is engineered to imitate a biological organism. In this case, when the material is damaged, with said damage appearing in the form of cracks, the crack breaks microcapsules containing an adhesive. The crack also breaks other capsules containing a catalyst. The adhesive travels through the cracks, eventually reaching the catalyst. When both meet, the adhesive hardens, thus repairing the crack. Like self-healing, microvascular transport is also a biomimetic functionality. In this case, it imitates the microvascular system of living organisms. This technology allows to leave in place a microvascular system of microscopic channels inside a composite part as it is manufactured. Just like mammals sweat to dissipate body heat, one can make a structure sweat to dissipate heat or to deliver de-icing chemicals to the leading edge of an aircraft's wing or to blow or suck air to achieve turbulent flow control on an aircraft's wing and so on. The possibilities are limitless. While metals and glass are largely impervious to gases, polymers are not. With more and more polymer-based applications in many industries, the quest for reduction of polymers' permeability is a great endeavor. Flexible displays, as the one shown in this view graph, is one of those applications. Current smartphones use a rigid glass display, which, being impervious to gases, protects the LEDs laying below the glass surface, from oxygen corrosion from the air. To make it flexible, the display would have to be made out of a polymer, and the polymer would have to be made impervious to oxygen, or else the display will rapidly degrade. Nanotechnology provides several alternative solutions, that are being actively pursued for this purpose. The previous chapter, Gas Permeation, provides great background for the current chapter, on fire safety, because mass transport, particularly in the form of gas transport, is an important component of fire. The consequences of fire on structural materials is best understood if studied separately as, 1, reaction to fire and, 2, resistance to fire. When materials are subject to fire, first they react to the fire, and a good reaction is seen when the material is able to delay or even suppress the combustion process, with minimal or no emission of toxic fumes. Subsequently, resistance to fire characterizes the residual strength of the material after it has reacted to the fire. A number of effective methods exists, and more are being developed, to improve both, the reaction and the resistance to fire. Among these, nanotechnology plays an ever-increasing role, with great promise for improved fire safety. Thermal protection systems, TPS, are a crucial component of space travel and other applications where structures must be protected from intense heat. During re-entry to Earth's atmosphere, 
spacecraft are subjected to intense heat caused by friction. The underlying structure, instrumentation, and occupants must be protected from the heat. Usually, the structure is covered with tiles of thermal protection system, that relies on ablation for dissipating the heat. Ablation is a direct conversion of a solid to gas, without combustion. Ablation is capable of dissipating enormous amount of heat, while consuming the TPS material. The optimum TPS, would be lightweight, strong, and have maximum dissipation and minimum mass loss in relation to the amount of heat dissipated. Once again, modern TPS materials, rely on nanotechnology to achieve these seemingly contradictory requirements. Magnetoelectric composite materials are said to be metamaterials because they can perform a function that no other material can. That is, magnetoelectric composite materials can convert magnetic energy into electrical energy and vice versa. Such conversion can be achieved also with a conductive coil, but a coil is not a material, it is a device. As such, a coil is heavy, bulky, and poorly sensitive to magnetic field, at least when compared to magnetoelectric composite materials. Magnetoelectric composite materials are a very peculiar class of composites, called product composites, to differentiate them from all other composites, which are additive composites. As with traditional composites, magnetoelectric composites can be laminated or particulate, each having its own advantages and disadvantages. Based on the descriptions presented so far, we can classify multifunctional composites as being a material, being a metamaterial, or being implemented as a device. In the table shown, we include a column describing the main characteristic on the current implementation of each functionality, which help us decide among, material, metamaterial, and device. Finally, on the rightmost column, we include the most common examples of classical materials that provide each of the functionalities listed on the leftmost column. We notice that, EM shielding and lightning protection, are to this day implemented with a discrete component, namely a copper mesh, added to the composite aircraft. And, on the last column, that aluminum provides those functionalities. Further down, we see that toughening for impact damage is provided by a multifunctional material, because all eight cases discussed in Chapter 3, resulted in composite materials, not discrete devices. Notice that aluminum did not require toughening, because it cannot delaminate. Next, Erosion resistance, acoustic damping, and vibration damping, all resulted in device-like multifunctional structures, implemented by adding a layer of polyurethane, a perforated liner, and a viscoelastic treatment, respectively. On the last column we see that erosion resistance is available in aluminum, but no examples are given for acoustic or vibration damping because metals are even worse than composites for damping. Although self-healing and microvascular transport are present in biological organisms, they are still classified as metamaterials because no structural material has those features. Both are implemented at the material level. And the only example of non-biological self-healing that comes to mind is asphalt. Gas permeation reduction strategies, fire safety, and thermal protection systems are all implemented at the material level, using nanocomposites. As for classical materials having those functionalities, well, metal foils have great resistance to gas permeation. Reinforced concrete and masonry are the best I can think of in terms of fire reaction. And metal ablatives have been used, but they are heavier than modern polymer-based ablatives. Finally, magnetoelectric composites are metamaterials, implemented in either particulate or laminate composites. And as for classical ways to obtain such functionality, one would have to resort to a copper coil. Thank you.